What do you say we bring out our guests? Let's get Shall after we? it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us in welcoming from Meeker County, kind of in the central, west central part of Minnesota there, just outside of Hutchinson, we have Connie Karstens and Doug Rath. Hey, thanks guys. Welcome. Really, really glad to have you guys here tonight. Thanks. thanks. So now I understand that we're, we're talking tonight about all things sheep. We have uh, uh, the Lamb Shop and Wellness Center. That's your business, right? And, and now where, where are you, you located at? Oh, we're from Hutchinson, 10 miles west on Highway 7. Okay. And from what I understand, we do, uh, we do, we herd and we shear sheep, we meat, process the meat, we do some of the marketing and stuff. Now you guys are doing it all. So share with us a little bit. Uh, they, they say you've been called the gurus of all things sheep related. You know, tell, tell us a little bit about how you guys got started. <laughs> Well, we first got started in 1986 when we got married and we decided that we wanted to make sheep our business. And so we wanted to vertically integrate everything we mm -hmm. were doing. And um, one of the first things we did was take a trip to New Zealand for a honeymoon. Well, they do a lot of sheep over there. It's don't all they? about sheep yeah. there. And so when we were in New Zealand, Doug, what did we do? Well, I took my <laughs> shearing training learned how to shear by with machines mm -hmm. and uh, we toured the place and um, learned a lot from all their grazing and just make a living on sheep there we thought you know if they can do it we can do it there you go okay folks we got it we got a treat for you Earl and I uh, made a little trip out to uh, the Doug's place here and he demonstrated for us and, and sheared a couple of uh, little yearling lambs for us and so we're gonna show you some tape right now and and Doug's gonna tell us a little bit about about what he does. Well, just um, when I was shearing there for you, we usually just set it on its butt down there and uh, usually shear the belly first mm -hmm. and take that out. As you can see on the picture there, they throw the belly out. That's the inferior part of the wool. So we always separate that out. And then if you watch the shear, he's always using his left hand. The sheep is always turning, trying to keep the legs up off the ground. Always got the legs up, my legs up against the animal. We shear the crutch, and then we do around the back leg. Mm -hmm. and then I went up the neck, and it's constantly turning it to the right. I actually teach sheep shearing, so. Oh, okay. And then I do the legs and do the side and come down the last side. Now, from, from what I understand, these are these were yearlings, so this is the first time they've been sheared, right? Right. They were just born in November. I was just trying to figure out how they just sit there so calm. They, were, they didn't, didn't make a peep. Yeah. They, they just, you know, I, I expect to hear them complain or ah, ah, whatever, and and they just sat right there and looked around and like no big deal to them. Yeah, it's it's the, the trick of is to make them comfortable, mm -hmm. and they ain't sitting on their tailbone. Oh, okay. So. I mean, I, I suppose I know animals sometimes have a feeling they know if somebody's trying to hurt them or not, and they know that you're you're confident or whatever, and you're just yep, yep. just taking care of them. Yep, certain certain little little moves that we always are doing that you as Washington didn't see what was going on that's why it was being comfortable sitting there right okay well that, that's really good cool. and then, then now I know like uh, uh, you, you laid out the kind of the pelt or the it's not right. the pelt I guess but with the 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 fleece yeah the fleece that's yep. it that's what I was looking for and, and you can you can see the shape of the the sheep there and, and, and I know you told us that uh, if they were older they'd have more it would stay it'd be together. a lot denser and it'd be like it'd just one big piece like a like a rug almost yeah you then. could see it yeah it was all the legs and the head and yeah. the back feet you could see it all one piece yeah and i thought it was kind of neat uh, earl and i both fed the little lambs after they were done that the waxy oily uh lanolin from them yep. was you know well that'd be good good hand lotion it's yep. it's well so tell us a little bit about about your farm and in the livestock you raise how many uh, how many of what and which and well, we got uh, 180 acres. It's all rotational intensive grazing. Okay. And we got 350 ewes. Wow. And uh, what we lamb year round. Most people oh, okay. only lamb once a year. Right. But with our markets, we've got to have something all the, all the time being born. So okay. we've got it from little all the way up to market size all the time. And um, we'll be we lamb in February. Then we lamb here actually in May. And then we lamb again in the fall. 
So it's continuously always. So the 350 ewes, you can put out about uh, 1,200 yeah. lambs a year, then, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah, you Because you get a little more than one to one sometimes, right? right? Sometimes yep. you get the bonus. Yep. Yeah, because like the ones that lamb in February, the boys are going back in for fall lambing. Oh, okay, sure. So it seems to me that you guys are really like carved out a niche in your all the marketing for your for your lamb and 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 your stuff. What, where do you sell the the meat in that? At? We have a lot of different markets, and we've worked hard to do this over the years that we've been working on sheep. We've we've been in the business since 1986 mm -hmm. so um one of the main markets that we currently have is on our farm we have an on-farm store where we sell lamb and then other meats that we raise on the farm which are beef and chicken we've got fresh eggs and then we have turkey that's seasonal at thanksgiving time and so we sell these meats on our farm in the store and we also have organic foods and oh, wellness products and mm -hmm. herbs and things like that. That's one of our main markets. Another market that we have is the restaurant trade. And we go to the Twin Cities on, on every Thursday morning and bring fresh lamb to some stores and restaurants there. One of the stores we sell to is the Wedge Natural Food Co-op and then also Seward. And okay. we yeah. sell to a few restaurants as well. And then we have an additional market, which is a real bonus for us. It's at the Minnesota State Fair. We're in the food building, mm -hmm. and we make um, gyros. We do burgers and wraps and lamb chops on a stick. Lamb chops on a stick. <laughs> on a stick. I like that. I yeah. Like that. <laughs> so we're real busy. Eat that right. Lamb chops on a stick. Now, so you, so you do the the processing of the uh, the animals too, then, right? Yep. Yes, yeah, we can do that under. We got the USDA cutting facilities right on the yeah. farm. When you talked about vertical integration, you were definitely mm -hmm. talking about everything from from start to finish there. So now, uh, I guess you, you now you said you got your training to shear sheep in New, New Zealand, right? When you're on your on your uh, honeymoon. Yep. And now I under, also understand that you teach people how to do that now yes and then and then besides all that you're a professional shearer and are you folks ready for this an international sheep shearing competitor is that correct that's, that's right so tell us a little bit about that I, I i saw when we were when you were shearing the sheep you had something from some international competition in australia on your back on that on the shirt that was on your on you that you had on but yep. t tell us a little bit about that well i've been doing co competitive sheep sharing all over the United States and then we got involved in I think it was 1996 was the first time I represented the United States and to be able to represent your country is you got to go to all these different contests and you gain points just like the race cars do mm -hmm. and um, for actually uh, it was 17 years straight I, in the point system I hadn't been beat and I, I've represented the United States wow. seven times now wow. and I also uh, I shear by machine, like you've seen on the mm -hmm. tape, and um, I also shear by hand. Now, I understand that. Yeah, yeah there's a little bit of, of old school availability there, and we brought this. Show us this and tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, when I was down in New Zealand, like the, uh, I think it was the second or third time I've been down there a few times, I learned how to shear the old style. <laughs> Earl backs up. So, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of sharp. You got any whiskers you need done? Yeah, no, no, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm actually uh, the only person in the world that's ever represented its country with machines, blades, and then I did the wool handling too. So what's it, what's involved yeah. with the wool handling? Wool. Is that after you shear them? <laughs> yes, the, there's okay. uh, there's a process. What they call them, Rousey's wool. The people that pick up the wool as mm -hmm. you're shearing, they separate the belly out the crutch area, the bad the top knots, and, and then they lay it out like I showed you onto a big table. They peel out all the bad spots and roll it up, put it in a special spot. They've all got little different bends. You gotta learn how to put them in. And They're then they get wrapped up in these big burlap right. things that are seven feet high. Seven feet tall because I used to work for a place over in Brookings, South Dakota sure. years ago. And we hauled that stuff around. We bought we they bought wool and then we'd haul these those big things around. So the sounds, competition is it is it like based on speed or or smoothness of the animal when you're done or what what's all of the above? It's uh, okay. speed and accuracy. Um, uh, 
make sure you don't have any mistakes. No blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what they call second cuts, make sure it's cut down to the hide the first time. Okay. You don't do two two second cuts. Oh, you don't. Yeah. So you got two pieces down, which right. is bad. Okay. So it's so now when you you put on your your sheep shearing, your your. When you teach people to do that, where where do you do that? Do you do that at your house? Or do you do it around the country? Or? Well, I've done it all over the world, actually. <laughs> and to do it at my place, I do it in all different states. I've been to Cornell University. I do that for the last 25 years. Go to, um, let me see, what the different places I've been to. I just came back from Tennessee down there. I've done Wisconsin, Colorado, Dakotas. I've been actually, the furthest place I got to go to was Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan in Russia. Really? Yeah, we went there and we did a... Um, teach them how to do sheep besides the shearing mm -hmm. and then Connie helped with teaching them how to do the wool. That's awesome. So yeah, internationally you said well, you're in New Zealand and Australia and now I guess you got a trip coming up here pretty soon. Right, we're going to Ireland here in a few weeks and to do that. And that's that's an international competition that's again, right. right? There'll be about 30 different countries there. Oh that's awesome. Yeah. So now if people want to find out more about your place uh, uh, I see we've got a website, www.lambshop.com. So what that they go there and they can contact you and find out about all the different things and exactly again we've got a calendar of events telling the different events that are going on. We teach a lot of different things on the farm to help people with anything from sheep production to sheep shearing to other things we do. You can. Check out all of our meat products and other products that we have for sale. So that shows everything. That's everything. super. Folks, make sure you check that out. That's all. You know, Earl, I, you, didn't you pick something up downstairs that you wanted to ask I, Doug about? I did. You know, I happened yeah. to notice that, and, and you brought them along. Some sh you, were, you got special shoes for the thing? That's every, right. It's like bowling. You got special shoes <laughs> for the event. Yeah. Tell us about these. Well, they're just, they're moccasins. They're for shears. Okay. And the reason we wear them is just because it's lighter on the feet all the time, you know. And then you don't, you can actually when the board when we're shearing, if it gets wet or from stuff that comes out their back end, mm -hmm. it, you don't slip and slide. Really, better yeah. than than a regular, regular shoe or work shoe. Right. Or it's lighter. And yep, and they'll last a couple of years. You know, regular leather, leather shoes will rot out on you. Let me say, Doug and Connie, I'm really glad you guys came down. Thanks for coming down and and. Thanks for showing Earl and I the, the ropes of the of the of the shearing. I think that's gonna about tie us up for tonight there, Earl. I think so. Folks, join us again. We'll be back. Good night, everybody.